She's connecting her heart with the things of the world, an earthly gospel. This is the equivalent of the outer court gospel that I talked about when I handled the nature, the gold, the revelation about the gold that makes up the wedding rings. She's very earthly. She's preaching a gospel that's talking about the blessings of the earth. And yet the Bible says, connect your hearts to the treasures in heaven where there are no moths, no rusts, or no thieves breaking in and stealing. Everlasting treasure. So your heart may be there. Hallelujah. She is not preaching a gospel that connects her into the kingdom of God at all. She's preaching horizontal, not vertical to the Lord. Hallelujah. And so, you see very clearly that she is supposed to have been aware that the day of the wedding of the Lamb of God, the day of the wedding of the Messiah, is the most important day in her calendar as the bride, the bride of Christ. The perfect bride. Because that's the day of make or break. Either she's in or she's out. Hallelujah. And we see very clearly here that the rejoicing in heaven is coming out of which fact? Out of the fact that and his bride has made herself ready. That is the church. And he says, fine linen, bright and clean has been given her to wear. Are we there, somebody? Fine linen. That is the wedding gown that has been given her to wear to prepare her for the wedding. So now that she's putting it on, heaven is rejoicing, somebody. Isn't that the most important day in heaven? Every woman that knows that she's going to wed, that becomes her most important day on an earthly level here which is just a little drop in the ocean by comparison of magnitude how important the day of the wedding of the Lamb is in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And so by presenting the two golden wedding rings in the sky, pure gold, well designed, it took a lot of time to decorate them. He's saying, you to decorate your gown, make sure it is spotless. You to take time to get rid of all spots. It's a warning to the church. It speaks about the perfection of God. And there is nothing the church can complain about and say she has not been given. Hallelujah. The same Holy Spirit that glorified the Lord in his wedding gown and raptured him on the Mount of Olives is available to the church to prepare the wedding gown. Remember the wedding gown was prepared in Isaiah 53. When Jesus died, when he was crucified, that was the process of preparing the wedding gown for his bride. It was a tortuous process. Isaiah 53. He was crushed. He was torn for our iniquities and sins. But listen to this. After one becomes a Christian, receives Christ, the wedding gown is freely given to you. That means every single human being walking the earth qualifies, has a right to the wedding gown. He died for them. He died for all of them, the six billion or plus. Each of them, by receiving Christ, the blood of Jesus, has a right to the wedding gown. But listen to this now. The problem is that in the process of walking in the faith, walking in a Christian, in this Christian walk, walking in this new salvation of the Lord, many times there are many spots that come on the gown that the church wears. Hallelujah. No wonder the Lord has opened a mighty door of repentance so she may clean up the stains on the gown. Hallelujah. So every Christian has a wedding gown. 
by right because she was already purchased. But how many Christians have kept their wedding gowns spotless? And he says, fine linen. I like that when he says fine linen, start, fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints. Hallelujah. There is a lot of revelation here, somebody. Have you kept your gown fine and clean? Or it has been tainted by sexual sin and sexual lust and lying and false prophecy. Remember, deception, lying, and false prophecy are the sins of the Antichrist that will come to deceive, to counterfeit the Lord. She's in witchcraft. She loves the things of the world. She has loved money more than the Lord. She's in idolatry, idol worship. Name it. They have tainted the wedding gown. So that's why the Lord was speaking to the church through the wedding rings. Look, church, you are the bride of Christ. You belong to heaven. Please prepare the wedding gown. But there's a revelation here in this wedding gown here. Because it says, fine linen stands for the holy acts of the church. The holiness of the church. No wonder in the book of Hebrews it says, chapter 12 verse 14, he says, make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy. And he says, for without holiness, no man will see the Lord. Hallelujah. Just as he who called is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. The Bible is full of God speaking about his holy nature. No wonder he says the holiness of the church is the fine linen, is the wedding gown. But there are two other aspects here. He says bright and clean. Hallelujah. Has the church kept the linen clean? Remember the bright aspect of the... Hallelujah, this is revelation. The bright aspect of the fine linen that will qualify the church to wear that precious decorated wedding ring, that bright aspect is what comes out of the fruit of repentance emanating from the church that is the bride of Christ. Coming out of the church that is the bride of Christ. The fruit of repentance. What do I mean by this? In the book of Matthew, the Lord speaks, Matthew chapter 13, verse 43. Hallelujah. Look at what he says. Matthew 13, 43. I say this is going to be very deep today. The church will never be the same again. This is the turning point. Matthew 13, verse 43. This is what he says. I begin from verse 41. He says, The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. Isn't that the cleaning process I've been talking about? And he says, they will throw them into the fairy furnace where there will be the weeping and the gnashing of teeth. Isn't that the purification I've been speaking about? Verse 43 is for you. It says, Then the righteous will shine like the sun. So when it says fine linen, bright and clean, the brightness of the fine linen comes out of the fruit of repentance which outpours, which brings out righteousness. He says, then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He 